All right, y'all. So we are back. As you all know, if you've been looking at the markets, we're in the middle of a bloodbath, man. And this is great. I mean, I couldn't be happier. We're getting some amazing buy zones. Some good entries can be made at these current levels. And I like it. I mean, I'm, I'm DCA and into the stuff that I have conviction into, obviously. I mean, this is the time to do it. Everybody wants to buy when everything's green. Everybody's making all this money. Not realizing times like this is when the real wealth is built. So everyone's worried, talking about all this stuff that doesn't matter one way or another. Are they, are, like, as, as money hungry as the world is, is they finna let the economy crash? No, I mean, it's really that simple. Like, this is one of the biggest, crypto is one of the biggest money drivers in, in, in since since the beginning of time. Like, it's like, this is one of the biggest vehicle, um, vehicles of wealth that's been created since the you know this is the newest one like is this the latest one like we we had like obviously stocks i mean there there was the real estate that that came about and stuff like that but crypto is the new thing they're not they're not letting this stuff die they're not letting it letting it go anywhere um it is the best form of currency moving into the future um if you've done the research and you know that like, it's like this stuff is not going anywhere so everything else is realistically noise However, I still like to hear the information, but I, I, when I hear the information, I'm digesting it as just noise and just to know what people are saying, what's going on, what people's thoughts are. I don't care if I hear, oh, this is the end of crypto, it's over with, it's done. It, like, none of that matters to me. I don't care what anyone says. It's not about what anyone else thinks, it's about what I think. What I think is that it's too much money to be made in crypto and people are too greedy to let that go. That That's what it comes down to for me. So logically i'm buying right now as opposed to anyone selling because they're scared that it's the end and like no nah, i feel like this is this is what makes this is the time periods that make millionaires like this is the time periods that make billionaires um so yeah i feel like it's, it's time to make some smart moves and smart investment decisions but anyway let's jump into it let's let's hear what's going on on the um the crypto news arena and yeah let's get into it so i think that's why it's all coming to a head this week i mean to me it's it's a very important week because we know you, it's hard to catch a falling knife. As you're pointing out, support levels are being broken. Markets around the world are crashing, including crypto. They call this a falling knife. But so if the knife is stopped. falling and you want you're, you like catching falling knives, I know you. So the question is, at what point do you catch the said knife? The question is, do we keep dipping or is now the time to buy? Comment your opinion below. Curious to see what you think. I doesn't matter in the slightest if you have conviction towards something when it falls to what it seems like is the lowest level you dca into it but don't dca your entire bag into it just dca enough into it where you're comfortable that way if it falls even more you have more to dca like that that's just, it's, it's really this is a very simple game this is a very easy game and you practice good habits you do research into high conviction plays it's you're, you're golden you're fine um, now, obviously, I mean, Bitcoin is one of my highest conviction. Like, that's what I've been buying. I've been buying Bitcoin. Like, I, I, I'll be honest with you. It's like, um, even though it's, it's much more opportunities and altcoins and things like that, still, you have to be in the right thing. And those those are more speculative. Something that I don't feel is very speculative at all is Bitcoin. So, yeah, I'm, I'm more so on the Bit Bitcoin bandwagon. But, yeah, anyway. I think a lot of this depends on whether financial conditions in the U.S. start to tighten. So many experts right now are calling for emergency rate cuts. This may surprise me. I'm calling for 75 basis point emergency cut in the Fed funds rate with another 75 basis point cut indicated for next month at the September meeting. And that's minimum. Let's say that Jay Powell came out and before September, an emergency meeting comes out and he lowers the rate, does the market rip or does the market say, oh my goodness, it's worse than we even thought? I'll tell you, I think that there is mass manipulation going on right now. You think that we're going further south on this market, don't you? I do, Stuart. Last night at around 12.05, if you follow astrology, the, uh, Mercury is in retrograde. The mainstream media is not reporting what really caused this crash. <laughs> what did he, he just get to talk about? Did he just get to talk about astrology? I'm lost. Hold on. Like, what was that sentence? <laughs> Yo, no way this is what mainstream media is talking about. I don't watch mainstream media. Like, it, it's nonsense if you ask me, but that was just crazy. Like, what, what did I just hear? Retrograde. The mainstream media. Five, if you follow astrology, the, uh, Mercury is in retrograde. The mainstream media is Dude, not. What the fuck that got to do with the economy? He said, if you follow what, what Mercury and what they doing on Venus over there, like, <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> what? Reporting what really caused this crash. We will. That's why you subscribe. 
for daily videos keeping you informed on everything going on in crypto. So, what really caused this crash to happen? It wasn't Satoshi. Every time something like this happens, I always see the uninformed saying Satoshi wallets are active, Satoshi is selling. And while we do see old wallets reactivated from time to time, Satoshi Nakamoto is not selling his coins. And it isn't BlackRock. Everybody is saying that these Ethereum ETFs have been a failure, BlackRock has pulled out, BlackRock is selling. That's not the case. I see value in having an Ethereum ETF. You got to realize the people more, most likely to panic are the people without money. People that has... Like, BlackRock controls what's going to happen. Like, realistically, if you know what's going on, BlackRock, BlackRock controls what's going to happen. You think they're going to jump in something, get scared, and jump out? Like, no, if they jump in something, that's, that they have a plan that they're going to execute because they're going to make it be something. Even if it was never going to be something, as soon as they get involved in it, it's going to be something now because they have the power to make that happen. So people don't think about things from that perspective. They think about that things in terms of them, like, oh, BlackRock took our little money that we need to put back into the because like you you're paying BlackRock no matter what they they like if you take a flight BlackRock is getting paid you you book a hotel BlackRock is getting paid it's like why do they need to scam you in crypto it, it makes no sense like people got just got to break down obvious things and I think the more information you have the more educated you are the more you can actually break down how it wouldn't make sense for BlackRock to jump into crypto suddenly change their mind when they have the power to boost crypto single handedly by themselves it's like. They, that makes no sense for it makes, it's not a, it's not a smart narrative at all. So yeah, I mean, but what what I I wouldn't put past them though is causing a scare, creating these headlines and things like that, so people start to dump and they can buy up more secretly or they can buy up more publicly. But I mean, I wouldn't put secret wallets past any like government officials, like none of that, none of that stuff. I wouldn't put secret wallets past any of them to be accumulating right now and be using this smoke screen to accumulate more. Because that's what, like, at these prices, these are the prices that they want. They want to get in and they want to have a controlling stake of of the crypto. Like, th that's what it is. Like, it's becoming obvious that this uh, crypto is the future. So this is the perfect time to try to tank everything and get in and, and get get in at better prices and get even more of this in, into their possession. That's what it goes. That, that's what it comes down to, in my opinion, anyway. As I said, these are just start stepping right. stones towards tokenization. And I really do believe this is where we're going to be going. The Ethereum ETFs have been less successful than Bitcoin, but they are still some of the most successful ETFs in history. They are approved, and that's significant. Because they are approved, Ethereum, like Bitcoin, has entered into a new paradigm. I was a skeptic. <laughs> yes! I, you know, I was a proud skeptic. Yes. <laughs> and I studied it learned about it and I came away saying I believe Bitcoin is legitimate. So BlackRock isn't selling quite the contrary. BlackRock hasn't sold a single sat BlackRock Fidelity Grayscale. Not even Michael Saylor has sold on this dip on chain data confirms this amazing the class of buyers in these ETFs. They buy and then they hold Kamala and Joe are not cracking down. They haven't really signaled any change from their previous stance. We do know Kamala seems more interested in being more fair than Joe on crypto, but we'll see. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been. So no, these two are not the reason for today's dip. Donald Trump is not the reason for today's dip. The most famous man in the world says he in fact wants to support crypto. For too long our government has violated the cardinal rule that every Bitcoiner knows by heart. Never sell your Bitcoin, right? <laughs> Never sell your Bitcoin. And so, as the final part of my plan today, I am announcing that if I am elected, it will be the policy of my administration, United States of America, to keep 100% of all the Bitcoin the U.S. government currently holds or acquires into the future. We'll keep 100%. The fact is, the mainstream media is presenting you with many boogeymen right now. Most aren't getting it right. And guess who owns the mainstream media, by the way? Guess who owns BlackRock? <laughs> like, guess who owns this media? That The media that's, that's you know? And guess who, who owns crypto? Who, who's buying crypto? BlackRock. It's like, 
it's some it's some high level games going on here but if you learn to identify this stuff and play the game with the people who you know you know you learn to play the game you won't be worried about stuff like this you'll be like oh great they're giving us another opportunity and all the random people scared but i'm not going to be one of those randoms i'm going to jump in here and do what i know needs to be done it's time to man up but yeah the real reason crypto markets are crashing are as follows and make sure you follow for daily market updates Today's dip was caused by, number one, the Japanese stock market crash. The Japanese stock market just suffered the biggest single one-day drop in years since 1987. The only reason why the Japanese market is up so strongly in the last two years is because the Japanese yen has been very, very weak. Once it reverses, you got to get out, right? And I think they're all getting out right now as a result of that. So an indication of whether the Japanese stock market is going to do well or not is just looking at the yen. Mm -hmm. And today you have the yen falling down to what? One, appreciating to 146, which basically means that there is still a lot more pressure on the Japanese stock market, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. This has reverberating consequences that we're seeing throughout the world. What else caused today's crash? War in the Middle East. Iran is threatening war. Israel is threatening war, bombing two schools. Israeli officials are bracing for a potential attack from Iran in retaliation for recent assassinations of the top Hezbollah and Hamas leaders. The attack could reportedly come as early as today. And in fact, there are rumors that Bibi Netanyahu's cabinet is revolting on him. So tumultuous times in the Middle East causing stuff like this to happen. In addition, a weak U.S. jobs report has been released. U.S. hiring fell sharply in July, a setback for the economy. Tie this in to the lack of Fed rate cuts. Now, rate cuts are still expected as early as September, maybe multiple rate cuts this year. A reduction in our policy rate could be on the table as soon as the next meeting in September. Rate cuts will happen, and when they do, I expect a huge rebound some experts are even calling for emergency rate cuts right now before September. Listen to this. This analyst teaches finance at Wharton School of Business. Also, he is the chief economist at Wisdom Tree. Interesting thoughts here. This may surprise me. I'm calling for 75 basis point emergency cut in the Fed funds rate with another 75 basis point cut indicated for next month at the September meeting. And that's minimum. The Fed funds rate right now should be somewhere between, you know, three and a half and four uh, percent. Let me give you very simple logic of my position here. At the June meeting, the Fed has said that the long run Fed funds rate, when inflation reached two percent and unemployment has come up to four point two percent, should be 2.8. That's the normal. 2.8 is the normal Fed funds rate. Well, on Friday, we blew it across the employment number. We're at 4.3. That even argues for a lower one. Now, as far as inflation, we're at 2.5%. We've gone down 90% towards the target on the inflation rate. We've, we've overshot the target on the employment. Those are the two targets explicitly mentioned by the Federal Reserve. All right, and how much have we moved the Fed funds rate? Zero. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Let's say that Jay Powell came out and before September, an emergency meeting comes out and he lowers the rate. Does the market rip or does the market say, oh, my goodness, it's worse than we even thought? It, 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 it rips. It, it welcomes it. Absolutely. Because it's so far behind the curve right now. And big picture, this dip was caused by overall weakening momentum in the uptrend of crypto. It's important to realize that there is no fundamental flaw in Bitcoin or crypto that would cause this. Instead, this is just a reaction to external temporary factors. The question is, buy now or wait? Try and catch the falling knife or wait for lower lows? Expert analyst Tom Lee, listen to his thoughts. Bring in Tom Lee, managing partner, head of research at Fundstrack Global Advisors as well as a CNBC contributor. In times like this in the past, it always would help to know, uh, Tom, whether it's a, a sharp, scary spike down, which a lot of times uh, 
the other side looks just like it, or people are hoping for that so much that they don't see that it might have longer to go. Do you, do you get the feeling that this is not going to be a major sell-off? Uh, for now, I think it is the former that you described. You know, we have over three days, suddenly markets reverse, and you know, Japan down to over 20%, and as you're pointing out, the NASDAQ could even you know, decline further. Um, declines like that are generally symmetric, but you have to watch the VIX, and when the VIX peaks and starts to roll over and fall down, the recovery can be just as quick. It does seem like, as we look back a lot more, this is because of the surprise hike from Japan, and right. the, the, the sort of knock-on effects from there if that is the primary source of the reaction, I know it's going to be tumultuous for markets, but for the U.S. economy, it's not necessarily bad news. And I think that's why we can balance. The last time the VIX was at this level was April 2020. So for an investor, that tells us kind of where we are, which is we know markets are nervous and they have to unwind, but it's not been a bad time to be thinking that there is a big opportunity on the other side because... Once the VIX starts to calm down and markets have already corrected, we know that there's opportunity. Right. I mean, Knowing that, of course, it's August, as so you point out. I spent a lot of time talking to Mark Noon, our technical strategist, over the weekend. And I think that there is a reprieve coming this week. Like, who knows? It could even be today, right? We could open down huge, and then after 11 a.m., we could reverse higher. But I kind of agree with Joe that this is still August, and I think that markets' traction really doesn't come back till October. So between now and... October, it's maybe a range-bound market yeah. at best, but there'll still be opportunities. There you go. Please do not be fooled by anything else. Don't be fooled by the misinformation that's out there. I actually sent this video to my friends who always worry during times like this. You should too. People need to know this. I actually bought the dip, but this is a continuing story. We'll have more on this tomorrow, this week, so make sure you... I bought the dip as well. I bought the dip as well. Like, that's what you do at times like this, in my opinion. I definitely bought it as well. So, um, yeah, make sure you subscribe to Altcoin Daily and subscribe to this channel. We go over interesting stuff like this, and you get to hear my opinions and my thoughts and how I'm approaching it. I know a lot of people are very, very insanely experienced. So, um, it's like, I mean, I I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still newer to it. I mean, the last bull run, I, I made, like, what, around, like, 200, 200 grand, something like that. Um, and this one I'm planning to do a lot better. So it's like, I'm trying to beat my last score. I actually learned how to read charts. I learned how to, uh, trade a little. And yeah, I've, I've been doing a lot of stuff this board run. So it's been, it's been work season for me, like very, very working, locking in, staying educated, watching things like this, staying informed. Like, um, that's, that's very important on, on these growth journeys. So yeah, like it, it, let's go crazy. Let, let's go crazy. It's, it's time like don't don't let this this stuff scare you don't let don't get tricked out of your position just start to understand it the more you understand it the more, the more you understand the world as a whole and i didn't realize how much all these markets were connected before because i was locked into a closed ecosystem with a closed mind towards anything outside of what i cared about in the nft space but once i expanded my mind outside of that i was able to start seeing how massive opportunities are everywhere and that leads to insane profits and gains if you know what you're doing. So, yeah, that being said, let me know what you all think in the comment section down below. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace out, y'all.